All right, game screen's loading. Uh, just to round off that thought I was making before we got into the game, though, uh, I got quite a few messages about this. A uh, little bit irritating because I know it's not our website. Like, okay, first of all, the base trade TV calendar has been a little bit janky this month, guys, and that's a lot on me. I've been not communicating things properly and whatnot to our, our folks in charge of that. But a lot of other websites just have things straight up wrong. Like, people were saying the North American group was supposed to play two days ago from some uh, esports something website and all these other things. I'm not sure why this information is so confuddled because we've been very clear about communicating on Team Liquid, the Team Liquid calendar, as well as uh, social media like Twitter. So I'm a little bit confused as to why people are unsure of how and why these things happen. But the TLDR, the wildcard group, was supposed to play yesterday. That is correct. But it was moved on account of the fact that there's a lot of Korean conflicts for most of the Korean players in that group. The date's to be determined, and we don't know when it's going to be yet, but it will likely be after Valencia. So probably, I don't know, 17th or 18th, somewhere along those lines. But at any rate, with that aside, we are getting into the first series of the day for the for no, nope, not the Korean, for the North American Ting Group. It's the round of 16, and two people from this group will go to that round of eight. In the top right side of Dust Towers, kicking it off for Root Gaming, we got the Red Zerg Hydra. In the bottom left, as the Blue Terran, he elevates Masa. So I think a lot of us come into this group today with high expectations for Neeb to get out of here. And we'll just assume for a moment and put Neeb to the side, say he gets first. The question kind of then becomes a battle for third or second. Who can take it? And between Hydra, Masa, and Kelezer, I think Hydra would normally get my vote. You're like, oh, it's Hydra, you know, WCS Hydra. But he actually had to play the second place finals to even get into this group in the first place. And I'm not saying that he's in a bad spot or anything like that, but so far in this tournament, he's not had the best showing that I would have expected out of him at least. Yeah. He's gotten here uh, kind of on the skin of his teeth. Uh, he was in the second place decider and got three, uh, three two major, but uh, obviously it's three two and three zero. So and it was a closer right. series than we thought because it was weird with cheese yeah. and whatnot. But this I'm not trying to down talk Hydra here, guys, by any means. He's still a good player objectively. My only point of bringing this up for point of reference is maybe Masa and Kelzer actually have a pretty solid chance of finishing second, depending on how games go today. Yeah. Moss is always a head scratcher for me because he is so consistent, but just never that guy that I'm like, oh yeah, I, I see him in a group, I know he's gonna win. Only when he plays am I reminded that there's a reason he's usually well, farther in, you know, with American tournaments and whatnot. It's funny you say consistent with this, because I agree. And it's not that he's consistently good or consistently bad, but it's like he's consistently both. Like one day Moss will come to a tournament. Uh, Canadian base, Kings of the North, whatever, and he'll just wreck everybody. It won't even be a close fight. He'll just 3-0, 2-0 all over the place. Then, for example, Homestory Cup. He tweeted he was a little bit flustered, he was a little bit frustrated, like he wasn't happy with his performance, and he consistently did not well over there. So, yeah. I think a lot of this is going to be like, what kind of monster do we consistently have today? And I, mm. I, I do hope for the best. I mean, I'm, like I said earlier, rooting for Kelezer because of that Overwatch love. <laughs> Shout out to Kelezer. But if either him or Masa got out of the group, um, again, nothing against Hydra. I think it would just be really interesting to see that sort of upset come into play. Sure. I think Kelezer is also always a. Uh, he's pretty. Consistently on the up and up, um, he'll have his bad days as well. But he's been steadily getting better for the last like two years, so it's always a chance for him to show something. And we did give Neeb kind of the in here, as you see, a macro game entirely, like Moscow for third CC and Hydra not doing much else. Um, we gave Neeb the first place pretty easily, and I, I think that is going to be the case, especially since he'll be facing a Terran first. Uh, sorry, Kelzer, but I think you're gonna lose. Uh, um, more like sorry, Neeb, I'm like. Kelzer's gonna kick your butt. Sure, sure. Uh, and then uh, I imagine, I'm gonna guess Hydra for this, but we'll see what Monster can do. But regardless, Neeb would only, I think, be able to be beat by Hydra. Um, I think his PVT is too good. Oh, and yeah. And then sure. Hydra is the only guy that was even near him on like ladder rankings. And of course, he's the guy that uh, kicked him out of the first place at, at DreamHack. So he's kind of the only one who can do it. Hmm. Uh, Lost Patrol and Chance asking if we can talk about the offline uh, Lima League stuff. Maybe later. Sure. Like, yeah. absolutely no problem talking about, but maybe later. Uh, not right now, not the first game of the Ting Open. By the way, I forgot to shout out our sponsors, Ting. Make sure to check out bttv.ting.com. You guys know the drill. But, um, yeah, so it, regardless of who and what this group shapes up to look like, we, of course, have these two preliminary matches to go through. And while we might have an upset here, we might not in the finals or the loser's bracket, all things considered, depending on how it plays. I will say, though, I don't expect this, Like, and this sounds a bit strange to say, I wouldn't be surprised if we did have a TVT loser's bracket match, though. Um, yeah. And that, for me, is really interesting, because I actually hold Masa and Kelezer in highly close regards to their TVT skills. 
But anyways, we are, once again, getting really far ahead of ourselves. Hydra in this game, big questions for me is, of course, with melee upgrades, is there going to be a lot of mutas involved with this? Uh, this mm -hmm. could also just be investing in this future and just play the mid-game as roaches and ravagers. But we saw specifically versus yeah. players like Major, you know, making sure to get mutas, cut out the drops, not let it get out of hand. So is the, the balance patch ready on an A? Uh, you know, I don't know. Click on the queen. How much range does she have? Uh, it should be eight. Yep, it's live. Okay, great. Good news. So that's All right. actually. I'm glad you brought that up. There, there are two changes that were applied that people should be aware of that were different from the other two groups that will only apply to this one so far. Queens of plus one range when shooting air and spore crawlers burrow slightly quicker, allowing them to reposition sooner and ideally deal with liberators better. Yeah, at least in this game, it's not about liberators at all. I mean, we might initial reactions to to buffs or nerfs are really strong usually you know like dt gets its change everyone uses dts for like a week um a unit gets nerfed suddenly like no one uses them it takes like one brave person to bring it back so that might be the case with the liberator um no it's like seriously but no no i have this push is what i'm wanting at like oh this? limit of extra on the way you say there's something missing from it. Yeah. Um, but uh, so we might not see any liberator play from from anyone really. They just might assume that the queen spore crawler change is too good. This push was going to be easily denied. I mean, Hydra had a pretty good scout on the game and knew exact timings basically to have as many roaches as possible. But he's going for roach and fester, and he is going to be getting into those quick hot, uh, ultras. Not high not hydras. He's hydra. Uh, which means that Moss is on a timer, as always. It looks like he's going for double factory pretty quickly here. And I do hope that is for tanks. Uh, I don't see any wind of mine production. I don't see any factory production right now, so I don't know what it is for. But I hope it's tanks. Well, so picks up a queen and backs away. Masa is getting cost-effective trades so far. I guess this will drive us Ooh. back to another point we had brought up in a previous cast, where the idea of Terran doing too much harass can sometimes hurt them more than help them. If you're not killing enough drones, you're not killing enough queens, you're just constantly being deflected and bleeding out units, you may have been better just kind of saving up for an A move. But, uh, again, yeah. this was doing okay before, kind of falling flat now for Masa. It does have two more drops on this side, or I guess one? Well, yeah, one. I don't know why he did that. He definitely had more marines, but oh well. So, yeah, as we watch the harassment go down, I imagine Hydra's going to be pretty good against it. This is this is very predictable nowadays uh, for ZVT. I, I guess we have to actually have a discussion since we're waiting so long to continue Ting after this. <laughs> oh, the fourth thing is get cancelled. That's pretty good. Um, about the new maps and whether we use them or not. Right. <coughs> um, speaking oh, of that, is... first up, nice cancel on the hatchery. I uh, gotta give a shout out to Ting Jesse joining us in chat, guys. He's been quite busy with work and there's a lot of cool stuff on the horizon for Ting, so he's been working really hard, if you can believe that. Uh, anyways, he's joining us in chat, so give a shout out to Ting Jesse if you see him, guys. Give him a hello. If you got any questions about Ting, he's the one who set up this tournament and sponsorship and all that good stuff in the first place, so he is the man to ask. And of course, quick reminder, guys, we're, while I don't know our current number, and this might be something to ask Jesse, actually, uh, if we can get 40 people signed up using Ting, shopping from their store, all that good stuff, we can get uh, Ting Season 3. Ooh, almost gets that second investor. That would have been really nice. Unfortunately, the Marines yeah. do go down, and Masa's drops have kind of flopped. But I guess at the end of the day, we look at the supplies, and at least he's not falling behind in this regard. Ugh, cast a curse on that medevac. But <laughs> it's it's uh, with Ultralis on the way. It's not about playing even. It's about getting kills and killing his opponent. I like the way that Masa is playing. I know we recently cast Major, bringing him up again. He would drop not twice, but like probably 10 times over the course of the game and, and two of those would be doom drops and they just seem very effective and we, we discussed like maybe waiting a little bit and, and actually pushing with a main force i like that masa only had two drops four amount of x in total but two drops um this one's still alive i suppose but he really was just bulking up his army back at home he got that pretty quick double tank production uh but this oh, is a maneuver that is so so often used yeah, he does two... barely enough to clean it up though well, the 2 2 legs are chewing through the SCV is pretty damn quick, so 11 are down. A tank's live, which I'm a little bit more surprised about. Uh, but 16 workers, and he still hasn't actually cleaned it up yet. Meanwhile, he's looking to push in, and he knows his timing is right, but he can't wait for too long. But the corrosive bile's hit. Not enough medevacs to heal this bile on the fungal growths, and corrosive bile combo might just be a little too much, but he does start pushing on the left side. He's getting a little bit of ground, uh, Hydra that is, as he continues to push this back, and Masa had to pick up those tanks and disengage. Masa really needed all of his attention on the front line, oh. as well as his reinforcements oh. immediately on the way. And instead, 
He got caught off guard with that Ling attack. I mean, it's one of those things that you kind of forget over the hours or days that you don't have it happen to you, and then once it happens, you're like, oh, right, like, I definitely should have checked for that. Now, it's nice that I got this tank sieged up. I was a little bit worried this was owing about him bringing the front lines unseaged, but I guess he needed to actually move them as the medevacs were all on the front lines. A little bit scary, but we look at the supplies still for Masa in trouble, and now we got Ultralisk coming up, and we got some people in chat saying they're new to StarCraft. Hi, hello, please understand, this unit that's about to pop out is uh, going to kill everything that's tiny on the map. <laughs> Stupid, yeah. It's, it's not Masa. going to die thanks to this upgrade currently researching called Kindness Blading. Yeah, Masa really needs to push right now, but unfortunately feeling a little bit scared after losing out and being pushed back. <clears throat> yeah. His tank count is now at that really good number where, like, if only it was rallied... He would probably still be doing some damage, so, but... This wall is not a full wall, by the way. Even if the depots were up, I just want to put that out there. Yeah. More SVs go down, and Masa... He's in trouble. He's, he's kind of already lost. Unless the tanks do some serious damage against the Ultras, which they can. If they're in a choke. Um, he's just probably going to be overwhelmed. We've seen so many other Terrans. Uh, he actually just taps out himself. <coughs> Well, game number one goes to Hydra in this best of five, and not a good first game out of Masa, if we're going to be honest. But at the same time, we've seen him bounce back from worse, casting him so often. Mm. Someone brought up his stats. I don't know if it's true. I haven't looked it up myself, but someone claiming that it's uh, like 19-1 and for him versus Hydra. Like, dang, that <clears throat> that would really suck if that's the case. Uh, passive Crime sitting up with a 24-month resub and pooing in the process. Bracket poop. Bracket. Thank you so much. Uh, Jesse, by the way, may not actually be online to field questions, and I only bring this up because he is actually showing that StarCraft passion. He's currently online in StarCraft playing a 2v2 ranked match. Ooh. Again, the fact that we've got a sponsor is this into StarCraft is so cool, guys. <laughs> Just giving him a bit of a shout out, nonetheless. Uh, I guess with Masa needing to restart, uh, what is the next map? I'll go queue this while we wait. King Sejong Station. Excellent. The broken one. So no no intro there for this. Um, I guess while we do have a moment to talk, people are asking about the Alima League and the offline aspect of it and all these things. Sure. Uh, I don't know what... Here's the thing, guys. We're involved a little bit with the planning. We know only Molly, obviously, personally. We're friends with her and all this stuff. But we don't actually know what's going on with that. We have prospects and we have goals we're working towards, but right now there's nothing set in stone. Like right now there is no wording on anyone's part that says base trade TV, Rifkin and Sambria will be like live in Korea casting the offline finals, but we'd like to. However, that would only apply to the end of the year thing. And the monthly finals that are going to be done the way they are, are still just going to be us at home chilling and them yeah. in Korea at the studio. We, we don't even know if we're going to get a clean feed or we're going to be allowed in the games. I honestly don't know which one would be better. Oh, I I guess maybe we didn't discuss that with her, but there's no way I'm working with a clean feed. Clean feeds are just not good. Unfortunately, opinion. while they're they're very frustrating to work with because they can break, um, first of all, and that's that's terrible. Um, and you can't control, like, having an observer PC is, like, really, really helpful. It is like It kind of, like, is the only reason that, you know, the offline exists. But, of course... It's offline more for the Koreans than it is for the uh, English cast, so yeah. I don't know if they'd really force the issue. And just a fair point here, guys. Again, I'm not, I'm not. This is like, this is great going forward. We're really happy for Olivia. We're really happy for the Alima League and seeing something like this grow to be so big. Um, but there are some things that definitely need to be ironed out. We'll see as time goes on, the new time slot and all this stuff. Um, the only concern I really do have with the Alima League going forward, and I've expressed this internally and. I'm not trying to cause trouble by saying this here, is that it was a foreign audience and foreign Patreons and foreign supporters that built up the Alima League. And I'm just hoping that between new times and clean feeds and whatnot, they don't get alienated through this transition. Because I think overall, yeah. this is a good thing. This is an amazing step forward for the Alima League. But it's going to really totally suck if it's like also, okay, by the way, this is only for Koreans now, even though you all helped us get here. Yep. I mean, the, the new time is going to be... 3 a.m. PST. Pacific, yeah. Uh -huh. So that, that's like dream hack start time. So, I mean, it's Europeans yeah. can still tune in. Maybe those with insomnia in North America. <laughs> I don't know. But, again, just really emphasizing, guys, I think it's a good thing overall. It's a huge positive. There will be some bumps along the road, but we'll try our best to work with them and work it out and bring you guys the casting and all that good stuff. Uh, and we'll give a big thank you to Dove and Wolf for ending us up with a 21-month resub as well. 
we are still just waiting for Maso to restart, guys, and join us here in a moment. So uh, we're probably just going to throw a commercial break down as much as I wanted to avoid doing this. So I start talking about other things. And we'll see you guys in two minutes, hopefully with Masa back online and us ready to play. Okay, that timed out almost perfectly. We're just going to swap to the in-game screen as we load on in to King Sejong Station. So again, mm -hmm. sorry about throwing ads at you guys so early. Just not having that... Uh, <laughs> Usually it takes like a minute to relog, right? <laughs> Monsters take it several, so we were a bit worried for him. But he's here, he's good to go, and we're gonna hop into game number two. Spawning here in the bottom right side of King Sejong Station, he is the blue Terran player. Team elevates Masa. In the top left as the red Zerg, he is Hydra. And just adding in here as well, Masa, for those who don't know, are probably wondering why is Masa playing the round of 16? We didn't see him in the qualifiers or the round of 32, and that's because of his extraordinary performance in Season 1 of Ting. He was invited back. Him, Mana, Snoot, and Rogue. And so far, Rogue is the only one living up to his invite status. Yeah, well, that's to be expected in, like, top three Zerg. But anyway, um... Well, Masa didn't look so good in the last game. Apparently, a little bit of lag issue, and maybe just a bit of a warm up too. Uh, the biggest issue was definitely for getting, not checking, whatever for those links. That is such a common maneuver. It, it's almost like you know, back in the day when you had to check for links with your Hellions, you know, because you knew they were just right around the corner waiting to go in. Uh, I guess people have kind of forgotten about that since people also forgot about Hellions in general. But uh, yeah, dust towers, that's super, super common. So hopefully he shakes off whatever rust was affecting him. Yeah, I mean, I'll give it a first game where if he wasn't warmed up and wasn't practicing, A, shame on you, but B, then it's a bit of a whatever game. Hydra, I will say, is always, every time we've ever been cast a game with Hydra, he's always been online early, he's always been online practicing, and I've never really seen him just kind of dick around. Like, he takes all of these, even the small cups, like Corsair cups and such, pretty seriously. Yeah. Huh. He kind of, I guess he kind of lives up to the the stereotypical Korean machine, not quite like innovation, but uh, just constantly working and online. You know, there was a show match recently actually with him and Kass, I think it was or something. I, I can't remember who was uh -huh. running it, but I remember they had this like fun facts thing, and there's something about how Hydra can't see out of his right eye or something along those lines. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they provided a bunch of uh, fun facts, which is a cool idea. You know, two that are Star Starcraft two related, one that's. Um, no, not not so much. But yeah, apparently he's blind in one eye from a childhood accident. Yeah, that's crazy to me. Just like to consider this as a guy who I guess you could argue has an impairment, one variety or another. But he plays StarCraft so well, and uh, I don't know. Your eyes are a pretty big deal. Being able to see the games clearly, <laughs> all that it's good just, stuff. It's so. more like depth, depth perception. There's not much of that to do here. <laughs> I don't well, know. I don't know. My, my point of it is, it's still impressive to hear somebody has something that would... Because if you have anything that affects your hands, like if you're a pro gamer with arthritis, you're like, oh, respect, you know? Somebody with eye problems for a oh, game that God. you have to look at all day, respect. Like, I already liked and respected Hydra quite a bit. I had no idea that there was any form of impairment on him. <laughs> yeah. As someone so who has, like, neck and, like, wrist issues, I can't imagine playing the game with arthritis. But yeah, so, I mean, like, again, like, I, I already like Hydra, <laughs> and respect to it goes even further for you. Yeah. Uh, I guess we also. Oh well, I spoke about Hellions. That's that's funny that we see Hellions right now. They're they're mostly forgotten about unless you're gonna do an attack like um, Hellbat or non Hellbat. They still look the same. You know, they get the medevac with them and a, a couple of Marines, uh, and it, it really can be a choice of whether to put down that armory or not. So we'll see if Masa does. I think you'd have to start it pretty soon though. He already has 100 gas, so I'm gonna guess no. Just a frontal push into the natural base. Yeah. Looks like it. Uh, but I was also gonna bring up oh Overlord Scout. Kind of impossible to deny when it has speed. That's tomorrow, I guess, we're gonna be casting as well. Which wasn't on the calendar. Yeah. Um I guess to touch base on it lightly now, but more on it afterwards. Uh, we were asked today to possibly cover some of the WCS Challenger stuff, so It was a bit awkward. Yeah, um, they had assumed we were doing it. We were never contacted because they've been giving us less games. We assumed we were just completely shafted from it. I don't know. Whatever. It is yeah. what it is. Which, uh, it's nice, though, because it means we'll still keep casting. That's always good. Work, work, work. Yeah, yeah. we originally intended to be casting every single day up until um, the summits. And uh, because of the wildcard group, it kind of got mixed up and whatnot. But whatever, whatever. The attack is now commencing. And this... It's exactly what I was talking about. I mean, the drop, I guess, was... Uh, 
almost, I feel well, this, unnecessary, to be honest. This feels a lot more akin to something you would do versus Protoss, at least the way it's been handled. And uh, less yeah, about what you do versus Zerg. I mean, these aren't Hellbats, after all, and they should have been just pushing with, yeah. a, with the army instead of dropping. But if you drop versus Protoss, you run the Hellions in and distract everybody, that's good, and we've seen it work. But, I feel like, like, Masa just tried to pull a Protoss strategy against the Zerg, and that's why you don't do that. <laughs> I mean, well, okay, so we're, besides the, the actual strategy chosen, we've been seeing more and more, like, you know, non hellbat attacks, I feel, whenever we see the Hellions, and I don't know if that's just, you know, because the armory is so much more expensive, they're like, I'll just do without it, maybe if I get half the damage, it's still worth it because I didn't get the armory, I'm not really sure, but his, his execution of it was really questionable, like, Okay, it sucks that Lings were already in position, and I guess that the Queens were in position too, but the one thing on King Sejong that every Terran should know is that a Zerg player's gonna have a Spore Crawler in that natural, like, blindly. They don't need to scout anything to really have to put that down, because it is such a likely chance you, that they're gonna need it eventually. Yeah, and versus Liberates especially, so... Yeah, so, the, you know, he ran, he, he realized it, like, a second too late, so he kind of veered to the left, right? But there's already lanes and queens, and it was just a, it was a disaster, really. I mean, he's going for a third CC now, but that was a lot of his early game aggression gone. Now he's going to try and place a little bit with, I guess, at most drone kills with a Hellion drop, which I don't even think would be enough. Like, if you got, like, 30, okay, that's different, but, like, 10? I think that Hydra's still okay with that. Uh, I have a paint too bleak of a picture, picture, I suppose. This game's over, just GG already, Massa. I mean, <laughs> I, I wouldn't go that extreme, but I would say you can't afford to make mistakes versus Hydra, that's for certain. Uh, yeah. The fact is, the matchup... It drives me insane watching how much this particular matchup varies in skill amongst the three main regions. I mean, we've obviously talked about Korea and kind of rolled our eyes at a little bit. Europe's shown a lot of dominance, but the question does always come back to North America. It's a bit of a wild card. Like, the North America was making Protoss work when Protoss wasn't work. I mean, look at Neve, for example, right? Then look at the other regions. Same thing kind of goes here with, like, Terran may be in a completely different state versus Zerg here than our typical Europeans with Euro Thermal amongst others, but uh, unfortunately, right now, it doesn't seem to be the case at all. It just seems to be pretty standard Zerg good. Terran, not good. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks to Billy Zane one for the nine month resub. Thanks for doing everything you do, guys. You're welcome. Thanks for resubbing. Ha, he called um, you a guy. I don't mind that, though. I know. On the list of topics to make an argument about. From someone yeah, who regularly gets, <laughs> like, blasted for calling you dude, I think, uh, I think I know that you're okay with called. Guy. You do? Well, have you not seen some of her YouTube comments? People get uh, really upset I seen, that I call I've you dude. I've seen one or two. Wow. Yeah. I always use dude. Maybe I should. I also use man a lot when I probably shouldn't, but oh well. It's just like, bless you, man. Like, why do we say these things? It is. Just... Oh my god. Right? Okay. Picks Language. up some tumors. Live tumors on top of this, which is really nice, but the roaches are actually here, not that numerous, but down. Uh, where'd the rest of them go? There they are. With the infestors looking at that drop, I guess. So, Masa playing a little bit safe, just cleaning up the creep for the time being. This means he's not going to get caught in too big of an engagement, even if he does get uh, hit up with a fungal. But. Up here to the north, Hydra's a little bit shy in defenses and may have left an opening for Masa to get in here and do some serious damage. That was pretty clever. Uh, Hydra noticed at the very last second to send some reinforcements back, but he's still losing quite a few drones. Nine. But I think it's still along that same thing that like if he loses ten drones, I don't think he'll really care. The worst thing about that is actually the larva that he has to use to replace it, because he's, he's banking enough minerals, but he's also banking enough larva, so not even that big of a deal. Clock has already started with the Ultralis Cavern, and Masa, I don't believe, is close to where he wanted to be. Last game, he was pretty damn close. It really was just the lane counterattack that hurt him so much. I think uh, without that, he would have had a very decent shot at a push. But looking at his army now, and the timing of the Ultralis Cavern, yeah, he's got to do more of these drops if he hopes to, to get that better frontal push army. Stim and Stutter and Focus Fire alike, not bad. 18 drones dead. Drop on the south side, still going. But uh, the north one does get cleaned up. And as you said, like he might not actually kill about drone kills. You gotta consider Hydra is now down a total of 20 workers, but he's still only 10 behind that of Masa. Right, yeah. Uh, and I wanna watch these Queen Medivac battles just to see how much of an effect the range has. Uh, there was a dynamic change with the Mothership Core. I actually totally didn't even consider this. Oh, yeah. For those who don't know, the Mothership Core and the Queen would actually have kind of like a 50 50 chance 101. Now the Queen wins every time. 
Yeah, if you kited the queen on free, she would win, but uh, otherwise they'd kill each other at the same time. Yeah, you get that one extra so. shot coming into the fight now, which is way better. But uh, yep. regardless of that, we don't see any liberators. And you brought this up before, and I'm really wondering if that might be the case, where, okay, forget the queen buff for a moment. Like, plus eight range, whatever, cool. Shoot down liberators out of the sky. Roaches, Ravagers, and Infestors have been coming into the matchup in such a big way over the last two and a half months. That might just be why Masa says, screw it, I'm not even going to bother going liberators. They're just going to get shot down out of the sky by really cool free spells. <laughs> I mean, that's no the thing salt. about Curse of Bile. Like, it doesn't have any energy. It's not. It's actually not salt. Like, it is kind of like cool that it's free, but at the same time, maybe not super balanced. But uh, Curse of Bile only re really relying on a cooldown paired up with fungal growth is a dangerous combo. Yeah. Well, I think the uh, it's really tricky to give or take away energy based stuff. I mean, those of you who weren't around Wings of Liberty, they actually did it to the Thor. <laughs> <laughs> you used to be able to uh, EMP it, or uh, not EMP. Sorry. Well, feedback you could EMP it, it but it feedback it. Yeah. Um, so it's, that's, that's really tricky, but I'm, I'm, I know people have been suggesting for a while, you know, fix Cross of Bile range or uh, cooldown no, or what have you. It, it used to have an upgrade that could get it, let it get to 13. Yes, I do remember that. Uh, Medivacs oh, with the tanks inside really of them, a little bit scary. Not that poor. Uh, the tanks in the high... Whoa, 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 what was that? Okay, that was a little dangerous. He dived in for the Ravagers because he wanted to remove oh, them okay. so he could kite the rest of this, which I thought was actually... It, it was dangerous as we saw, but not a bad move. Problem is, though, Ultras have kite yeah. plating and they're just seriously unkillable. It's... I don't even know what you could do to really tweak this. It, they just have so much armor, and as we well, can see, they are being focused David down slowly. David Kim, he, I mean, despite what is a questionable queen score buff, uh, PG, he does have a good grasp, I think, on the problems, right? Like, I think even if you believe one is more OP than the other because of the whole, you know, region Korean Zerg versus not Korean Zerg debate, I think everyone can agree that Terrans are good in the mid game and Zerg's late, good in the late game. So he talked about, you know, reducing the armor of Kitness Plating down one or two. <laughs> You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm actually really okay with Ultralisk being the stage of the game that forces something out, right? And that's what it does right now. It's it's end game, GG's, you gotta like do something big before this hits, and then it gets really scary. I just wish there was a better either response to it that you could eventually... Because right now we know ghosts do work, but fungal growth cancel them out too well. Um, I'm almost wondering if there's something where maybe spell effects wouldn't cancel the snipe, or alternatively give Marauders back their one attack instead of two. Would that fix things enough? I don't know. Like, there's a lot of question marks that go on with this, but what I do like is we do see um, a bit of variance at least. Like, this crazy intensity that is the chitinous plating has forced people like you, Thermal, to find ways to end games earlier. And we watch really cool games with him as a consequence. However, I don't want every TVZ we cast to be a game that has to win around five minutes, eight minutes, or the Terran loses. Like, that also kind of sucks. Yeah, no one likes a timer. We don't have a map in triple this, do we? No, we don't. It's Frost. Yeah, that's right. Um... Right, Frost never had one, King Sejong broke. The Frost sure. had one, but that was before okay, we started Elf going copyright-free <laughs> with our content. Yeah. And, you know, uh, actually doing things legally and, and whatnot. Whatever. It's esports. No legality here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, game number three. Spawning in the top right corner of the map. It's going to be the blue Terran down two points and on his last life, Masa. The top left as the red Zerg, he is Hydra. <sighs> okay. Well, I guess a little bit on that last conversation we had in the... Well, it wasn't a break, I suppose. In between, so if you're watching the YouTube VODs, I apologize. Um, <laughs> I don't know, because the, the ghosts... It, the ghosts have so many issues to them, and it's not just that the fungal affects them. I mean, I think we are going to be really reaching for Masa here and what he can do, because I'm sure he's he's thinking the same thing. Like, what could change to help me with this? Or what can I, can I change to help me with this? And the best of five. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and for him, unfortunately, he can't go talk to David Kim and demand a, a ghost fix right here, right now, but he can try and do some different things in the mid-game, I suppose. And it's, I think that's the only thing he can do, but it's very unfortunate, because I think I've said this for, like, a dozen other Terrans, and then they can't do it in the mid-game, you know? Like, okay... You, you can't go three CC builds anymore. You just can't. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna roll over you. All right. So you gotta go for like a two base all in. Oh, you did that. Oh, you died. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I'd be a terrible coach. <laughs> but I think that's like his three CC builds aren't working. The light harassment in the game isn't doing enough. I think it's gotta be all in, or he's just gonna lose again. Well, there's some 
we'll say non-pro strategies out there. I'm not referring yeah. to necessarily mech or anything like that, or even mine, but um, I'll give an example here. Nathanius has been making Cyclones look really good lately. Uh, of course, his games are focused on trying to abuse them, and his opponent's not at all being prepared for it, and all these other things. Yes, external factors, but just knowing that there are options, however viable versus not viable they may be, it's cool to know that there's still room for experimenting. The way I see it is, Zerg players didn't use Swarm Host for the longest time versus Terran in Heart of the Swarm, unless it was mech, right? Snoot finds a way to make it work for Spio. Cool, suddenly we have this new strategy and new dynamic. I'm kind of hoping Terran can find a way to do that with something, rather than necessarily force a bunch of changes that we're kind of contemplating and theory crafting right now on stream. Because that would be way cooler to me. Maybe. I uh, I think the Ghost is a really cool unit, so I'm always hoping for changes that make it more viable. Yeah. I honestly think that the... I, <laughs> I know that there was never an option to not give Terran more units, and obviously we need Cyclone, or not Cyclones, uh, Liberators to a degree, but I really thought that like Terran is a pretty perfect race. <laughs> I really hate the Liberator and the Cyclone, not from like a balance point of view, but just like, you touched my race, bro. You, you ruined it. So what do you think about now. Wind then? I thought Wind Mines were fine. Uh, unfortunately, like, Mutas were like really too buff to deal, to uh, ha do a tank style against anymore, and that's why tanks really fell off for a very long time, but the Wind Mines were fine. Yeah, so Protoss or Zerg that, and they're gonna tell you it was fucking bullshit. <laughs> 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 but uh, I thought that, I didn't, I didn't think that ruined the experience that much, you know, it still revolved around speed and and uh, a little bit of splash, and you know, it was still Meatling Bling versus now Widow Mine Marine Marauder, but now it's far more often Roach Ravager versus sometimes tanks. Sometimes would have mind, sometimes pure bio. Usually just Roach Ravager, which has made the matchup maybe a little bit boring for some people who really only enjoyed Vita Lane play. I know there are definitely people out there who uh, well, used was, to consider it, you know, 100% their favorite matchup, but now it's not. It was certainly a lot, in, uh, very entertaining to watch. Just the constant explosions, the will they, won't they hit type thing. Yeah, even even in that, that age, you know, like that month where Mass Muta was. Um, I also thought it was more enjoyable. The timer didn't feel like the same timer as Kiteness Plating does, you know, because it was 30 mutas and you were probably going to die, you know, unless you got that lucky Wood of Mine hit, but uh, still had a bit more hope than what is the plating here with the Infestors and Ravagers specifically. Like, if you if they only make Ultras, that that's that's fine for Terran, you know, build some Liberators for God's sakes, but they never only make Ultras. It's it's Lepigrated Lings, it's Infestors, it's, it's Ravagers, it's sorts of violent. It's uh, difficult there's, stuff. There's this one aspect to the game, though, that uh, core values that I've always kind of been talking about on stream, and I really wish Terran had its late game tier three units, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Like, that Zerg, had, Broodlords and Ultras are viable in very different situations. Battlecruisers are not. Thors really are not. Like, And those yeah. are the two, like, when I think of Terran, like, big, badass units, those come to mind. They're cool. Hell, even Tempest and Carriers have more action than Battlecruisers and Thors do. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a good point, too. I and mean, we're just, we're just theory crafting. There's really not a lot going on right here. I guess Masa notably well, went for a third CC again, which kind of sure. sucks. And Hydra's actually going for Needle Lane Bling. Yeah, the I actually like that choice for this map. Not to say Roaches and Ravagers would be bad, but you just witnesses control, the fungal growths, all these wonderful things. Uh, quick pause in my thoughts to so give a big thank you to the very generous Arknog. Hitting us up with a 24 month resub. Very good guy. Um, but. The the map itself just allows for a little bit more man maneuverability, I guess. So that's where I like the mutas quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that Frost and Dusk Towers are both maps where this can still work out. Technically, Mutaling Bling can work out on any map if that mid game is kind of pushed past. But mutas, of course, still have the hard counter and the liberator, uh, uh, which which makes them sucky later on. Thank you as well to Tanith's finest. Just resubbed for six months, and they say only recurring payment I enjoy seeing on my bank statement. Oh, uh, I know that feel, man. <laughs> Thank you very much for that resub. Now, the attack on creep is maybe not the greatest idea. He does try to focus the banelings uh, as he stutter steps away. It's dangerous, but he That's does pop cool. them all off. Nice control out yeah. of Masa. I you didn't have to go off creep, so that was a little on him, too. I wish you just retreated, but he pushed him back far enough they had to pick up, so another 30 seconds at least. For Hydra to remake those banelings and wait for baneling speed. Spire's about halfway done. That's something that Masa will have to consider now that he's he's seen Ling and, and Baneling. That's gonna confirm basically that they're gonna go for Mutas. 
So he should have that in mind too, and he is building some missile turrets. Uh, upgrades are also far ahead for Hydra. He did, you know, he delayed the mutas to get these really good upgrades, and he's not really at fault for it yet. Masa is pushing, and we see the age-old Hellbats along with his push. Well, Feels like it's forever much. What's important about the push, I think, is the timing that revolves around this. Like, there really isn't a hive with the Ultralis Cavern on the way behind this. It is still bailing. The Spire's only just completed. So, had Masa been able to really find a good push with this, Hydra would have found himself just without tools to fight with. Only Lings and Banlings. Well, he's pushed back once again. He's building Widow Mines. Is this a second factory? Okay, so no drilling claws for quite some time, but at least the Splash will try and be there. The Mutas are out. The Missile Turrets are down, but there's no Liberators, so they might be able to get into that main base. Ormasa might just be cleaned up here. Does have to pick up, but at least his third base vulnerable. Oh, oh the bye -bye. That's that. They get pulled away, but only into banlings. Things get worse from here, and the damage has certainly been dealt already. Not to say that Moss is out of the game by any means. I mean, he's still sitting on 50 workers and three bases, but I don't think his army can clean this up, despite being on even numbers. <laughs> oh, I, he had to drop the bottom, but it's going to get cleaned up. This was his best bet to try and pay that damage back, too. The Muta's gonna hound down the Medivacs, he's gonna have to unload, he'll eventually bleed this out. Maybe trade out for a Mutalisk or two. Yeah, maybe. Nice but, uh, call to Hydra, force. actually. Another force from Hydra is right in front of him. Make Banlings, there we go. Upgrade's about to finish too, so we'll be hitting a timing here. That's that's gonna work out better for him. Did Masa keep his Widomines alive? Mm, not really. I guess he only had two. <laughs> uh, there's three in play right now. Uh, I haven't seen, well, by the way, for the five month reset. Thank you very much, Kipo. He says in chat. I think three would have mind to be enough. Let's target it down. So fun. Even okay. You know, even if they got that like fifteen or twenty hit count, I think this still just be a little too much. Yeah, it looks like. It. Well, the first series today is going to go to Root Gaming's Hydra. He'll move on to the winner's bracket. Masa will fall to the losers. Next up, we're going to have Kelozer versus Neeb, and we are quite a bit ahead of schedule. So I'm going to actually bust out a bit of a longer video this time around. Um, we actually have this from Season 1 I want to show off again because I thought it was great. If I downloaded it? I hope I downloaded it properly. I don't think I did. Never mind then. Because I had that video from Jesse doing like the AMA and stuff from uh, last season. Oh. But if I did download it, I appear to have lost it, so never you guys mind. Uh, we'll go to a break. I'll get that set up for a little bit later on. We'll show that off. But um, congratulations to Hydra. I still move on to the winner's bracket part of this. But it's a best of five all the way through with five best of fives in total. So there's still more time and opportunities for Mazda to play. Either against Kelazur or hopefully Kelazur instead of Neeb for him at least. But uh, we're going to go to a commercial break from our sponsors, Ting. And we'll see you guys in a bit. 